Today I want to talk about what to do if your Android phone suddenly explodes. Whoa. Hopefully it doesn't do that, but what if you no longer have access to your previous phone? How are you going to get all of your information over to the new phone? Hopefully you have a lot of stuff backed up, but today I'm gonna to show you one of the processes in which you can do this, and that is through Google One's online backup. This is something that I enabled when this phone was turned on, so we're gonna see how that actually works on the new phone and see how to get everything transferred over. Let's bring back that phone real quick. And let's go into the settings and see what I have set up before this happens. Now, as you can see, this phone is kind of already on its last leg. This is the Pixel 9 Pro, but we're gonna upgrade to the Pixel 10 Pro today. So here under the settings, I'm going to go into the backup or copy data. So here I have backup data and it was backed up yesterday, which is an hour ago at 11.22. So we have photos and videos that have all been synced with Google Photos and then I have other device data. So this is going to be things like contacts and call history, device settings, apps and data, and SMS and MMS messages, as well as SIMs. So if you have a eSIM, it would be able to back that up. Uh, that is one thing, if you do lose your phone, you would need to get a new SIM card or the new phone support eSIM so you can actually transfer your SIM card directly to the new phone. So here it says whenever the device is idle and plugged in, it will back up. So every night your phone is getting backed up if you have this enabled, so that if something happened the next day, you would at least have everything backed up from the day before. So. This backup has completed, now the phone is gone. What do we do? Well, today I picked up the Google Pixel 10 Pro to swap out. So here, let's go ahead and get this unboxed. And here we get a message that we no longer need a physical SIM. You can activate your eSIM during setup. So that allows you to just quickly pull your number over without even needing to pull a SIM in and out. I'll show you how to do that as well. And here we have a really nice obsidian color. So here on the phone, there actually is no SIM card. So there's no little place on the top, bottom or sides that you would insert your SIM card because it doesn't have one. It's all now an eSIM. So we'll just sign in with my carrier and pull it over, show you that process as well. Let's go ahead and get this turned on. Here it's been turned on. We're gonna go ahead, choose English and now it's instantly giving me the option to set up using another device. So if you have your old phone, you can go through the process here, whether it's Android, Samsung, even an iPhone, you can transfer everything over to this phone, but we are going to not use that because I can't scan that code right now. So we're gonna go ahead and skip. Then we're gonna sign into our Wi-Fi to quickly get everything downloaded on the new phone. And we're setting this up for myself. And then we're gonna sign into our Google account. Now, usually at this point, you would need to verify your email on the old phone, but I don't have my old phone right now because it's blown up. So is what I need to do is we need to try another way. So here, um, most likely when you set up your account, you gave it another email address or your phone number to be able to access it. But right now we don't have access to either of those. Here it's saying you can choose to tap yes on a phone or a tablet. Um, you also have the option to use a pass key if you've set that up before. So here I like this option, tap yes on the device your recovery email is signed into. So we're gonna tap yes. So this is actually my wife's phone and I still have my phone. So she was able to send the confirmation to my phone. I was able to tap yes and then we were able to sign in. Now it's asking us to set up the eSIM. So we're gonna say set up eSIM and then it's showing all the different carrier networks that are available. Here we're going to choose our carrier and then it's going to check the info and we're going to pull her number down to this phone. So here to set up an eSIM, we will need to contact T-Mobile or I have another device signed into the account so someone else on your account that has access can go in and transfer the SIM. So here under the T-Mobile app, I can do SIM transfer or activation and then I can copy the info over here and it will then do the SIM transfer. Hopefully that wasn't too overboard Contact your carrier is the easiest option, but there's a way to do it without calling, and I can just do it right here on another device as well, or on your computer on the website, you would be able to do it as well. So here it's asking for an IMEI that's going to be on the box, or I can tap C device info, and there I can find that number to input over here. After a few minutes, that process is complete. It might take about two hours to fully get the number connected here, but we're ready to continue. Now we're gonna go ahead and set up a pin for this device. Then we have an in-screen fingerprint that we can add, but we're going to select not now. We can also unlock via face. 
I say not now. And now we have the option to copy apps and data over from our existing device. Finally, took us a while to get there, but we are finally there. So we're going to copy. And here we're going to restore from the Google Pixel 9 backup, which finished backing up 49 minutes ago. That's perfect. So now we're going to confirm what the existing lock screen pattern was to verify that was our phone. So you do need to remember that. And now it's showing what we have the option to back up. So currently on the phone, there's 15 gigabytes taken up out of the 256 gigabytes. Here it's going to sync automatically Google Photos, Gmail, Calendar, and Drive. But some of the things that we can have restored are all of the apps. If we wanted to, we can tap on here and go through and uncheck certain ones we don't want restored. We also have the option to uncheck them all. We can have contacts that were backed up to the SIM card. Usually those are going to be backed up to the Google account. So hopefully those are already there. We have SMS messages and MMS messages. So those are all your text messages as well as pictures and voice messages. Here we have device settings like Wi-Fi, password, and more. Again, some of these you can go in and choose, but not those ones. And now we can go ahead and tap restore. So now everything that we no longer have access to is going to be pulled out of the Google Cloud and put here on the new device. Now this is going to take some time to download, but pretty soon we'll have our phone looking new. We will just need to sign into our accounts. So here we have a few more menus that we need to agree to. So on this phone as well, we're going to say, yes, we want to back up photos and videos as well as other data, because that was so nice to have previously. So make sure those are checked. Turn on the backup. Here's some info about the warranty. I agree. And then it's going to say, hey, you should use Google AI. And we're going to just, sure, turn it on. Keep going. There's crash detection. We're going to turn that on. We can let others find us. We're going to agree to that. And then here's some other things you can set up, but we're going to say no thanks and no thanks. And it's doing the final steps to start using our new phone. So all we need to do is tap home and boom. That's exactly what the phone looked like before. I have my awesome, um, I mean, my wife's awesome strawberry background there. All the apps exactly where she had set them up are there like before, different contacts and other pages, calendars, everything like that. So you can see that some of the apps right now are currently gray. That means they are just downloading in the background. Once they have fully downloaded, then we can sign into those apps. Now, one really important thing that you would want to do here is when you go and sign into an app, you may not remember that the next time either. So what you can do is set up Google Password Manager. And whenever you type in a new password, it's going to back that up securely to your Google account. This is something I've used for years. I absolutely love it. It makes it super easy to transfer to a new phone. So then whenever we're signing into a new app, we can just verify with fingerprint and it will then boom, put our password as well as our username in there and we're logged in. Super easy. If you create a new account somewhere, it will ask you to save that and you then have that stored in your Google account for the next time you need it, which is really nice. Let me show you how to make sure that is set up. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go into the settings here by pulling down from the notification panel twice, or you can find the settings app. So I'm gonna tap settings there, and I'm gonna go into the password, pass keys, and accounts. And right here we have Google Password Manager. We're gonna open that up. And here we have Google Password Manager again. Everything is there ready to go for when we sign into an app. While we are waiting for everything to download, another thing I can do is transfer over the watch that we still have. So is what I want to do is go into the settings of the watch by pulling down from the top. And then down on this screen at the very bottom, I have the option for system. And then all the way down at the bottom of this screen, I have transfer watch. So transfer watch allows me to then pair it to a new phone. So we're going to unpair it from the phone we're previously connected to. Here it automatically showed that I can connect to it. We do need to have the Pixel Watch app. So once that has downloaded, then I will be able to connect to it. Now we're going to open the watch app and we're going to set up the watch. There it found the watch to connect to. And we're going to allow access to contacts and call history. Then we're going to pair. Here we're going to tap that that is the right pairing code. And now it's transferring everything to the new watch. And we're done. Then we need to connect to our Google account, connect to the Fitbit app. And after going through a few steps there, I now have the watch set back up. Everything is there. My steps are backed up from yesterday in the Fitbit app and that's ready to be used. So very simple to get that set up. One new cool trick the Pixel 10 has is the ability to work with Qi 2 magnet devices. So here I have a magnet wireless case 
So I can just snap it on just like that and it stays in place. <laughs> that rhymed. So cool that you can have that. Here I have another accessory. So this is a Pitaka MagSafe phone ring holder. So any MagSafe accessory is compatible. So here you can see that just kind of snaps on like that and pop it out. And now we have a place to hold our phone. We can twist this however we want. We can even pull this out even more. And that has a pretty good grip to it. So that is really, really cool. And that makes it so it lays nice and flat, not laying on the camera as well, pretty cool. And then, so why don't we go ahead and put on a case to protect this. Here it's also showing the magnets are on the case as well. So we can just slide this into place and snap that on and boom. We have a protected phone and I could also add a screen protector for extra protection, just nothing against explosion protection. Here, going back to the home screen, you can see that we now have a bunch of apps that have been synced and we're getting a lot more of our information here. So let's say we want to go into an app where we have an account that we need to sign in to see all of our information. So let's go ahead and choose TikTok. So if we go in here, it's then saying, hey, do you wanna log back in? Sure, log in. Then it's going to text a code and we log in, pretty simple. Now here on this page is asking us to verify with our password and you'll see this little passwords button there. If I tap on that, it's now looking through Google Password Manager to see if there is a password and it did not see a password. So I will need to type in a password to verify and then I can save that password. So there I verified and I'm now in. Let's try another one. So then here in Instagram, it gave me a pop-up saying, hey, there are some passwords stored. Which one do you wanna use? I can tap on that and then it can input it and we can log directly in. Really nice that I no longer have to remember every single passwords. And if at any time you can't remember your password, you can just go through the forgot password option, create a new password, and then you can sign back into your accounts and have all of the stuff that's on that account. So now I've gone through, signed into all the different apps. The other thing you can check is if your contacts are there, they're all there. So here, if I open some text messages, you can see that everything is there from our recent history. And then we pretty much have everything that is there. Now, one more thing about photos. So in the photos app, that is where everything is. If you were using the gallery app before, so if we go into the gallery, there are no photos now on the phone because everything is in the cloud. So that is all in Google Photos. So if we go into there, we can then see all of the photos that we've taken and everything's backed up there, but not in the gallery app. You can go through and download ones um, into the gallery app if you want to, but they're still there. They're just not in gallery. They're in Google Photos. Hopefully that makes sense. If you wanted to have them backed up on a drive and then plug it in and transfer, that's a whole nother story. So we'll save that for another day. But overall, that was a very seamless setup, very easy to do. Really nice that if I had no access at all to my old phone, I would still be able to get to my data through the Google account backup. Now I am paying for Google One. I don't know if it's any different if you're not, but very simple option to do if you have access to that. So if you have any further questions about this process, please let me know down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.